Let me give it to you straight. If you have plants, eventually you're going to have problems, be they pests or diseases or both, they're gonna happen. But fear not, I'm here today to give you my step-by-step -step method for dealing with pretty much anything that comes up with a real life example. My number one most important piece of advice is this. If you notice something amiss with one of your plants, take steps to address it immediately. If you wait, it could spread and kill the plant, but worse, it could affect nearby house plants. So take steps immediately, figure out what's going on and deal with it. My first step is to have an arsenal of treatments at the ready. Now, the first thing I always have close at hand is my magnifying glass. This allows me to get in close and personal with my plants. It's amazing what even a small amount of magnification can help you to see. Other treatments that I have available all the time, um, my neem oil spray. I'll put the recipe for this in the notes below, but this is useful for a variety of problems and it's often my first go-to when I'm not sure what I'm dealing with. Another one is an insecticidal soap. Again, I'll put that recipe down below. Alcohol is useful for getting bugs off of your plants, and I can talk more about that. Um, copper fungicide, I have done a lot of posts on my Instagram about how um, copper fungicide is useful. And mosquito bits for those nasty, naughty, terrible fungus nets. Along the same lines as having an arsenal of treatments handy, it's also wonderful to have a network of really smart plant people as well. Now, whether this is through online groups or books or YouTube channels, have um, developed already your go-to so you know where to ask questions. Um, it's amazing what other people know and what they're happy to share. The second step in my plant problem process is isolate. And I cannot stress this enough. If you were to find a problem on one of your plants, a pest or a disease, the last thing you want is for it to affect all the other plants in your collection. So get your plant out of contact with other plants. Now my isolation ward is my bathtub. It just feels like a hygienic space in there. There's easy access to water and I can spray things down and use my treatments and then easily clean it. So a space like that is really useful to identify ahead of time. My real life example of what I'm talking about is this. I noticed a lot of weird brown spots on the undersides of the leaves of my Schiflera arboricola. I at first kind of wanted to pretend it didn't exist because that's just truth. But then I saw a lot of it and it was disturbing. And so I immediately whisked the plant away, put it in my tub and sprayed the whole thing down with neem oil. So again, I didn't really know what I was dealing with, but it just made me feel like I was doing something. I will show you a close up of what those look like. Step three is do your research. You really need to know what you're dealing with as specifically as you can, because not every treatment is effective for every problem. With this plant, I consulted Dr. Google and I posted pictures in a plant group that I'm in and looked in some books. Now, what I kind of have surmised is that I'm probably dealing with a fungal issue. So it's either that or it could possibly be a response to cold because I have been leaving the window open um, in uh, the window sill that this one is sitting on. So it could possibly be that, but I'm kind of leaning toward a fungus. The next step then, obviously, is treat. 
when you determine what it is that you're dealing with, very likely there are some very specific treatments that you can do. If there are pests, there are certain things that tend to eradicate the pests, either most likely you have to remove the pests. So that's either with um, water spray, removal alcohol, with as I showed you before. Now, since I'm likely dealing with a fungal issue, my go-to treatment is going to be an antifungal. I will spray it on the whole plant, the undersides of the plant, the undersides of the leaves as well. And because this plant is rich in foliage, I will probably trim off the most affected um, leaves. So the whole leaf stem that has the leaves that are most affected. And that's just going to get rid of the problem completely. Okay, let's treat this plant. I've got my snips. I am going to sterilize them with the alcohol that I always have available. It's a simple process and helps prevent spreading of diseases and pests to other plants. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut off the most affected um, stems, like I said before. All right, I brought you in close so you can see what I am doing. So. The most affected little leaflets are here, this one. Now I have cut him off, you can see better the spots, um, just above a node. So hopefully that will prompt some growth. I'm just gonna look for, this one doesn't look too good either. So he's gone. This is a problem on and this one goodbye let's see well this guy doesn't look good very good either let's take him too all right now let's move into the bathroom where i will treat him with the fungicide oh hey I'm just in my bathtub here, spraying the fungicide all over the plant. So I wanna be sure to get the undersides of the leaves as well as the tops of the leaves. And like I said before, doing it in my bathtub allows a nice convenient place because it could just drip dry and it's easy to clean. The fifth step in the process is to propagate. Now, propagation is basically just an insurance policy. In case everything goes south and the plant doesn't survive whatever it is you're dealing with, at least maybe you're able to um, create a small plant, a baby plant, from your mother plant. Again, I'll bring you in close so you can see how I'll do that with my Schefflera. Schefflera propagate best from stem cuttings. And if you can see in here, I've got two main stems. So I'm going to try to find on one of them um, a plant, or excuse me, a section that has at least two nodes and a couple of leaves as well. So let's just look and see. I think I'll take from this side over here and I'm going to cut just above a node, which is where this leaf is coming out. It'll look like I'm taking quite a lot, but it's a vigorous grower, so I think we're gonna be fine. So I will take my cut right here, just a few millimeters above that node. There we go. Now I'm going to remove the lowest leaves. So that leaves a node and another node. And that's what I'll put in water. And I'll leave these guys here. Actually, I'm gonna remove this one as well. Then I'll have three nodes in the water. The plant is only, ha only has to support then these two uh, sets of leaves, and that's gonna give it the most success. The final step in the plant problem process is to know your end game. 
to know when enough is enough, to know at what point you are ready to pitch the plant. It's going to be unique for everyone and there's absolutely no shame in that game, but know what your cost to benefit ratio is. Your plant collection is your plant collection. You might be willing to fight it all the way to the bitter end, or you may not want to deal with creepy crawly bugs at all. That's fine. Don't let anyone tell you any different. You get to make the decision. Thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not yet subscribed, hit that red subscribe button. If you have any specific questions or even general questions, leave them in the comments below. And dear plant friends, let's keep growing together a greener world.